Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So in this video, even though these nightstands aren't done yet, uh, I'm going to start the finishing process. Uh, a lot of times I wait till it's done, I pull it all back apart and then I go through this. But since I'm on hold for glides, this is just a great time to get uh, this first coat of armor seal on this project. Um, but there's a whole lot of steps that go into that process and I'm going to use this video to give you a more in-depth dive into what I do in prep finish and you know my finish of choice itself. Uh, when it comes to finishes, man there's just so much stuff out there there's no way I could cover it all uh, in 10 videos and there's no way I even know it all. Um, I know what works for me. I have a few go-to finishes that I really like. Um, but I'm going to concentrate more on the prep and application and stuff like that than I am the finish itself. I will talk about the finishes and what I like and some other options. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to give you as much deep dive into my finishing process as I can. Uh, but for tonight, I'm going to spend the night getting the shop clean. I'm going to clean all my filters. I'm going to let the, the air cleaner run all night and try to get the dust out of this shop as best I can because that's best for the finishing process. I will see you guys in the morning when we start prepping these to apply the first coat of armor seal. So with the shop all cleaned up and the dust out and my filters clean and all that good stuff, it's time to actually get after the prep. Um, just for the record, when it comes to knowing whether or not I got all the dust out, I actually do run a Dilos meter uh, to tell me, and I'll put a picture of it down here to show you what the shop was actually at this morning. So I, I think I was successful. Now we're going to create a little bit more of this. Uh, going through this prep process, um, but I will, you know, again, clean that all up uh, just before we go to finish. But I really want to dive into the prep. Now, I've kind of staged most of the stuff that I use for prep here. It's usually all over the shop and I go get it as I need it. But there's some things here uh, that are pretty important. Obviously, you know, sanding blocks and various grits. Uh, at this stage, I've been sanding all along, so it's not very often I'm going to go to 80 grit. Um, and clear over here at 400 grit, this is usually what I use between coats of finish. Um, but I may use this on the end grain uh, when I get back here <laughs> on those legs. Um, because end grain soaks up at a different rate uh, than face grain. So... I tend to sand those a little bit finer so that the color is a little bit more even. Um, this light you can see here is actually one of the most important things to me. Um, even though I have great lighting in here for filming, I don't have very good raking light. So rather than trying to move pieces around, I'll actually take this little light and I will move it around to try to find defects that I can't see. Uh, of course, I will vacuum everything off, and the last thing I'll do is I'll wipe everything down with mineral spirits, uh, just to have one last good look at the surface, because that really mimics uh, the finish really well, so I can see if I've, if I've missed something and I can go get it. Um, tack cloths, I picked one up this morning. Um, but I don't usually use them. I know a lot of people do. I've heard some complaints about about them leaving residue and stuff, but I at least wanted to have one here as an example. Um, the mineral spirits on a cotton towel or an old t-shirt pretty much does the same thing. Um, my two sanders that I have here are set up in two different grits. I have uh, the small one set up with 220 on it and the big one set up with 180. Most of this stuff was already sanded to 180, so I'm just going to go try to find those defects. Uh, as we go through the entire nightstand today, um, as I find things that need to be fixed, that's where I'm going to take the opportunity to show you common things that you're going to come across and, and what I do to fix them. Um, this is the underside of, a, of one of the tops, uh, and I have a dent over here. 
And that's where that iron's gonna come in handy. I'm gonna try to lift that dent out. Uh, we'll see if I'm successful or not. Um, and it's on the underside. Now normally I, I would probably just blow this off and wouldn't repair it. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and repair it. And who knows, I may find something on the surface over here that I wanna do the same thing to, but I'm only gonna show it uh, once. Other things that come in handy are these little sanding blocks and you can literally just, you know, get your piece of sandpaper wrapped around it and now you can get into those round surfaces and stuff. This doesn't really have any of those surfaces, but it does have on the tops, it has this little convex and I'll try to get you a better picture of that here. Uh, where I can really sand the, that profile uh, much better against just putting the sandpaper on and, and sanding the profile. Um, chisels and card scrapers come in super handy for glue squeeze out, uh, as well as razor blades come in super handy for glue squeeze out. Uh, the water is here. If, if I was going straight to a water-based finish, I would raise the grain uh, at each step along the way here and then once the water was flashed off I would come and sand that back uh, because that, that literally will get rid of all that fuzz. Um, but I'm going to start with armor seal so I'm not going to raise the grain. Um, but it's not wrong to raise the grain either if you want to take that extra step, go for it. So let me get this stuff all cleared out of the way <laughs> and I will try to Set up the camera so you can actually see this little dent I've got to repair. And we'll get after fixing that dent. So as you can see, most of that dent came up. It's still visible, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and sand this with 180 grit, and this should all go away, and I'll get rid of my pencil mark now as well. all gone. So just a nice easy way to fix dents. Okay so this right here is actually on the other top uh, and it looks like a void here or a crack and what it really is is probably when I scraped the glue off of this glue joint I tore some of those fibers out. Uh, this is fairly common and CA glue and sanding without dust collection should make that very difficult to detect. I'm just going to apply some CA glue. Let that sit for just a second or two. And then without dust collection, I'm going to go ahead and sand and let that dust do the work for me. And there you see that little defect is much harder to detect. So if you look right here in the joint, you see that discoloration? That's glue squeeze out that I did not get cleaned up and that will affect the finish. So how do you get rid of that? 
You could use a card scraper. Uh, you could use the razor blade. You could sand. Um, there's a number of ways to get rid of it, but you have to deal with it now before you go to finish. Now this is going to be very difficult for me to reach because of the camera angle I had to get you guys. But I'm just going to get in there with one of these guys using the fine edge and a piece of 120 grit sandpaper. And I'm just going to get in here and sand that stuff up. like that. And I will follow that up with some 180 grit sandpaper just to smooth everything out and that joint will be all fixed up. So normally if my end grains were going to be showing in this piece I would sand these at least one grit above. I usually go a couple of grits above so that they soak finish uh, at a similar rate as the face grains. Uh, in this case, these aren't going to be seen, so I'll just leave those at 180. I might go to 220 on them. But what I am going to do is chamfer the feet. Um, so if this piece gets slid on the floor or, you know, whatever, uh, it doesn't prevent tear out or blow out by chipping that wood. And I'm just going to do all that by hand. Just a few swipes with a sander, 180 grit. Make sure it all looks even and consistent. And I'm going to go all the way around the foot that way. And I will do that on all of the feet. Uh, additionally, this is where I'm going to break all of these edges. And just like I did with the feet, just a couple of swipes with the sander just to knock this edge off. Um, this matches the rest of the furniture in the house. Oftentimes I will go ahead and hit this with a 1 8 inch roundover on the trim router. But this is good for this piece. Just take the sharp edges off. And I will do that on all of the surfaces so that none of them are overly sharp. All right, let's talk finishes. So what I have sitting here are kind of the finishes I have on hand, um, but I don't, most of them, I don't use that often. Um, kind of on this side of the aisle is uh, your oils and such, which are uh, typically easy to apply, easy to repair, um, but their durability isn't necessarily that great. And then over on this side of the aisle are more of your film finishing finishes, uh, your lacquers and things like that. Um, and a conversion varnish would sit right in about here. Um, again, not super hard to apply, uh, difficult to repair, um, but also very fast drying. Where this side of the aisle is very slow drying, this side is very fast drying. You can do numerous coats in, in a single day. So, as I discussed before on this project, I'm going middle of the road with the high performance and the armor seal. Um, it is a film finish. I use the armor seal because I like the way that the oil base uh, brings out the grain in the wood. And I could stay with just armor seal and build coats and it would look great. Um, but I come over the top with the waterborne because I think I get a little bit more durability out of it. I'm going to put a picture here on the screen somewhere of the table lazy Susan that's in my house. And it's been on my table, well, I'll bet it's close to 10 years. This is the finish that's sitting on that and it is a daily user uh, and it looks as good today as the day I finished it. Now, um, Although I use the armor seal and the high performance, uh, there's some members on my forums that use shellac and then the high performance, and they swear you can't tell a color difference. 
I haven't personally done it, so I can't vouch for that. Um, but they're pretty trustworthy folks, and, and I take their word for it. Um, again, it, you would just get a faster drying time in the shellac than you would in the armor seal. As a rule of thumb, you're, you should really let this cure for quite a while because it's an oil base that you're following up with a water base. Um, I'll be completely honest, I've followed up water base over this in as little as two or three hours and I've never had an issue. I'm not recommending that, um, but I've never had an issue. Uh, this Livo stuff, um, it's a little on the spendy side. Uh, and this is pretty much kind of what Daryl Peart uses. It, it, you can get it in colors and stuff. And it's nice for uh, leveling out wood or you know keeping your color consistent all the way across the, the piece. So uh, Daryl Peart builds a lot of green and green furniture. So that's, that's certainly important. Um, and to be quite frank, I probably would have benefited from this finish on, on all of the master bedroom furniture. Um, but it's not what I started with. It's not what my wife wanted. So I went with this. This was the color she picked out. Um, again, the oil side is very slow drying. You can go over it with, say, a water-based. Uh, but I would suggest a coat of shellac in between those coats and I would let this stuff cure for a very long time, literally weeks, uh, before I did that. Uh, a couple other things that I wanted to touch on. Uh, rattle can lacquer is awesome for that small quick win project, but the odor, man, it's, it's strong. Uh, those small projects as well, I tend to follow up with a wax. And now I, you can use Johnson's Paste Furniture Wax or whatever. I just happen to have the Renaissance Wax here, and I really like that stuff. Um, for food grade stuff, uh, you know, it's all over the market. They say you can use this stuff once it's cured. It's it's fine. Um, you know, take taking you know what you want out of that. Um, personally, I like general finishes, they call it wood bowl finish now, it used to be called salad bowl finish, um, and a lot of people like good old mineral oil, and there's nothing, nothing wrong with that either. Um, outdoor finishes, my go-to is Epiphanes, um, it's got some UV inhibitors in it and, and stuff like that, and it really holds up well, but again, very difficult to repair if you have to repair it. Um, what else is on my list? Oh, what about stains? Uh, I'm not covering stains in this. Um, the only thing I'm going to mention around stains um, is if you're going to do that, you should use a conditioner for blotch control. Uh, cherry is very prone um, to blotching. So although I think you can still get this, I'm not 100% I'm not sure. I know Charles Neal has passed away. Uh, this is mostly water. There's a little bit of, of wood glue in it and a little bit of waterborne finish in it, but it's mostly water. Um, but it really does help for blotch control. So I kind of hope that explains why I picked what I picked. Um, Again, if you have questions, feel free. Everything is in the show notes, how to get a hold of me and ask away. I'll answer what I can, and I won't lie to you if I don't know. <laughs> um, so next up, I'm going to go ahead and, and start getting those tops over here, and I'm going to show you how I apply this finish. Uh, again, I'm going to start with the armor seal, and my goal is just to get that oil on there and let that color pop. And obviously, we're going to be able to let these things sit for quite some time um, before I get the drawers in it and we actually get to the water base finish. But we'll talk more about that uh, when we get there. So let me put all this stuff away and reset up my table. And uh, we'll put some armor seal on those tops. See how I did on my repairs.
All right, so just some mineral spirits to let me know if this surfect, surface is perfect and ready for finish. Um, and I think it is. And it'll take a few minutes for this to flash off before I can apply my finish. Um, but that's okay. And that repair, I, it's hard to find. I think it was in here somewhere. Um, I can't even find it now. So that's a good thing, even though this was all on the underside. And even though you saw me vacuum, this is how much gook that still came off the surface by cleaning it with the mineral spirits. Okay, a couple little side notes here. If you don't want to wait for mineral spirits to flash off, you can use denatured alcohol uh, to clean up the surface. That's perfectly okay. Also, you'll notice that I'm dipping directly out of the can here. Most of the time, most people pour into a secondary container so they don't contaminate their can. Um, but I tend to go through Armor Seal fast enough uh, where it's really not an issue for me. Now in this case, I'm more concerned with just getting the oil on the surface than anything else. Um, so I'll put it on and then I will finish with full long strokes with the grain. I try to always start on the bottoms so that I can flip it over and put it up on painter's pyramids. And I'm not too concerned if I get a little mark from the painter's pyramids. And now I'll let that piece cure. I'll move on to the other pieces and I'm going to do all the rest of those nightstands exactly that same way. One last tip, anything done in oil, spread your rags out on concrete floor or outside or somewhere where they're not going to burn your shop down. So we're finally going to get around to finishing and I'm going to start uh, on the tops. Um, obviously my drawer glides aren't here yet, but once I show you what's going on on these tops, it's exactly the same process to get the rest of the case in. And this video is more about finishing than it is this particular project. So as I stated before, I'm going with a waterborne finish, uh, general finishes, and I'm doing it in satin. Uh, I like this because it doesn't add a lot of color uh, to the final piece. I did that with the armor seal and got the color uh, that I wanted. I will strain everything into the cup. I will wear a respirator. Even though there's no VOCs, there's still a lot of particulate in the air. I've covered all the equipment in here that really needs to be covered. And I'm using a Fuji Q4 uh, HVLP. Um, another little trick, these big gallon cans, by, you know, when you pour them in there, they always build around the rim. A little fix for that is a finish nail and pop a couple of holes in that rim and that finish will drain back into the can and still keep the can sealed. So I'm going to go ahead and load up the cup and get everything set up and we're going to actually spray in here today and I'm actually going to film a little bit of it today uh, but not a lot because it's hard on my equipment. Okay, so with the first coat on, all I'm going to do is hit this now with 400 
uh, on my prep and weapon block. And all I'm looking to do is take the little dust nibs out so there's no pressure at all on this sanding. That actually feels really good. And we're up for coat number two. So I let the tops cure all night long uh, and they feel great, um, but they can feel just a little bit better. So I like to take an old paper bag and just give it one last wipe with any remaining dust nibs. It will just take those off without scratching the surface. Another common question that I get is what do you do with the material in your cup? Um, you know, for long periods of time, say overnight even. Uh, on waterborne finish, I will leave it as long as I need to, uh, to include overnight. I had to shoot these client projects uh, this morning. So I actually left the waterborne material in the cup overnight. Uh, I had to clean a little gunk off the tip this morning, um, but that was it and I was right back to shooting. Now, if this were a lacquer or conversion varnish or something like that, I, I don't know that I would leave it that long. Uh, the gun itself is super simple. I'm gonna move the camera over here and show you quickly how to take it apart and put it back together. It's really uh, very simple. And I already cleaned this gun out today, so it's already clean. Uh, there's uh, a tool that fits this. I can never find mine, and I typically just use a small pair of channel locks, but I knew I was going to be doing this this morning, so I only left this one finger tight. Uh, be careful of the gasket in here. It's easy to lose. Whoop. Be careful of the gasket in here. It's easy to lose that um, when you're cleaning uh, in the sink or you know wherever you clean. This is the needle. And that comes out the back. There's a small spring. And that's it, the gun is completely broke down. Um, another thing to keep an eye on are these little filters or traps. Uh, they will clog up. So if you're having trouble getting the gun to shoot, uh, this is what I would check first. So we'll put it all back together. I don't know that the order so much matters, uh, just so long as you get it all put back together correctly. This has a small hole in the top that lines up in the gun, and this has a little pin on it. I don't know if you can see that, but that goes in the hole. This should be the last time I put this together, so I'm just going to put, don't crank on that, I just give it a little twist and then put the cap on it. And now this cap is what directs your spray pattern. Um, get it set on here. So when it is set side to side like that, the spray pattern is vertical. If I loosen this and I turn it to the side like that, then that spray pattern is horizontal. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, that's kind of a, an in-depth dive into my finishing process and, and 
oftentimes what I leave off camera because it is such a long process. Um, I hope you got something out of it. Uh, let me know. My, all my contact info is in the show notes, so send me emails, send me questions, whatever you got. Um, and let me know, too, if you enjoy these more in-depth videos or if you just like me to go back to omitting this kind of stuff and just build furniture. So until next time, guys, take care.